they, they, I clearly heard them say split decision. I heard that. I knew they read a card for me. They read a card for him. But at the end, I, the crowd, I guess it was the crowd, or I don't know, but I couldn't hear who they finally said. It sounded like they said Charles. Wasn't sure. I looked over and Charles and his team were celebrating. So I just, you know, I knew it was a close fight. So I just assumed that they, and I, I thought I did enough to win, but like I said, I knew it was close. Said it was a split, read the decision. Could not hear who they said it for. His team started celebrating, so I just assumed it was him. I uh, accepted the loss and, you know, shook DC's hand and went to turn away. And he kind of held my hand, like, you know, what are you doing? And he was like, You're, you won. And I was just like, this, you know, it was just crazy. I went from being like extremely low, like I said, accepted the loss, thought I lost, and then they told me I won and elated, super happy, and yeah, roller coaster, crazy. So when you say you accepted the loss, you, but you also said you thought you had done enough. So when they when you, for those three seconds when you thought Charles had won, did you think you had been robbed in there or did you think it could have gone either way? I, I knew it was a close fight. I, 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 you know, I felt off. I knew it was a close fight. You know, we're in his, uh, in, in enemy territory, so I knew that could have swayed the judges. Uh, yeah, I knew it was close. I thought, I, before even going to the judges' scorecards, at the end of the fight, you know, I ended on top, dropping elbows and stuff. I thought that, you know, gave me the last round. I thought I did enough to win. But, uh, yeah, knew it was close. And in the end, when they all started celebrating, when I say I accepted the loss, I mean, like, you know, in that brief moment after his team started celebrating, I was just like, oh, damn, I lost. And then DC was like, no, you won. And I was just like, this is crazy. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. I'll never forget it. And last thing on this one, um, did you talk to Charles after all of that? Because it's like, obviously, he was the opposite side from you. He went from the highest of highs to now he, he's, a, he's the loser in this one. Right after the fight, we, uh, I talked to him. I told him, you know, he, uh, I saw interviews leading up to this fight how he said that, you know, he had wanted a top 15 guy and somebody with a name. And I told him, I was like, I agree. I, I thought you did deserve a top 15 guy and a guy with a name. I was like, I appreciate you not, you know, being all political and saying you didn't want to fight me and all that. I appreciate giving me the opportunity. And, uh, but no, I, I didn't talk to him after the whole scorecard announcement fiasco. No. Sure. And then looking back at the actual fight, did it play out as you expected? Because obviously Charles was excited to fight you because you know he 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 liked your style of fighting. He was excited to prepare for it. He liked how you were showman in there. So d based on your ex expectations, to how it played out, how did how did it compare? I could tell he really studied me, and he really uh you know like broke down my feints and knew what to expect. He I could tell he knew what I was doing off of. He knew what I was planning to do off of certain small little feints. He knew what was coming. And you know that was kind of freezing me up, but I was freezing him up and stuff, and it was kind of like a chess match in there. Uh, you know, it didn't really play out. I still thought because of you know that dude's a killer. He's been in there with some of the best of the best. He's a really aggressive dude. I thought it was going to be a lot more action, but uh, that just tells me that uh, you know my tricks work, my feints work. I know that uh, I can uh, you know I, I'm I'm up there with one of the best strikers with the best strikers in the game. I can you know like I said that dude's a killer, and I I had him second guessing himself. I had him freezing up a lot. So go, kind of going off of that, you said you kind of quickly realized he did his homework. Did you have to alter the game plan at all, uh, knowing that he probably knew what was coming his way? Yeah. Like I said, I'm not used to uh, people. My feints throw everybody off. I'm tricky. I'm different. I'm weird. Uh, I thought I was going to have a lot more success with that. And, uh, yeah, just he – but, like, me being the striker I am, I could see that he was prepared for these things. So that had me uh, – yeah, it had me – uh, second guessing myself, I guess you can say. And like I said, it was kind of like a chess match. So, yeah, I just wasn't as uh, quick to let go with my shots because I knew he was uh, ready for them. And final one for me, are you expecting a number next to your name in, in your next fight, or are you hoping to get a guy, an opponent that has a number next to their name? Yeah, I was hearing all that, you know, talk leading up to it, and I, I just really focus on what's in front of me. That'd be cool, of course, but I'm just excited to have a, a guy of his caliber on my resume now. Sean, over here. Congrats on the win. What's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, were you surprised that you were such a big underdog going into this fight? No, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't surprised with that at all. The moment my manager hit me with uh, Charles Jordan, I knew right out the gate I was going to be an underdog. Like I said, he's been in there with some killers, and, yeah, he's a hell of a fighter. And, and you fought people in their hometowns before. What was it like fighting in Canada in a different country against someone in, in, you know, that's obviously Canadian? That cold, this cold stuff is for the birds. I, I couldn't stand the cold. Uh, yeah, this is my first international fight. I, I'm always proud to rep my city, St. Louis, and you know when I'm fighting in the states and stuff. But this is my first time uh, fighting international, representing America. So uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, and yeah, I've been in enemy territory before. I actually prefer that, to be honest, you know, because I I, uh, I know even though I was in enemy territory, that put a lot of pressure on him to perform in his uh, you know his, in front of his fans and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm all for it. I'll fight in enemy territory every time. Do you feel like he might have overlooked you in this fight? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, that's not me, you know, like talking shit or nothing. I just one hundred percent feel like he underestimated me. I really do. Yeah, yeah I think I feel like he felt like I, you know, I didn't belong in there with him. I should, you know, he shouldn't even be, you know, uh, stooping down and fighting somebody like me. All that. I definitely felt that he was underestimating me. How was the weight cut this time? With the fact that again, you're going to a different country. It's maybe not as familiar in terms of some of the things you're used to in the U.S. Like, like how? Yeah, you just said it there. And you all. And side note to that, I know you also <laughs> mentioned that the camp wasn't ideal either. Could you just talk about you know the cut and also the camp as a whole? Somebody must have told you something. Yeah, this was the. Uh, well, you said it post fight to be fair. So oh, okay. You, you told DC you didn't have a good camp. Oh okay. Oh yeah, the, the good camp part. But man, the weight cut. This was the most brutal weight cut I've had yet. Right. Um. It was just, it was just, I made some errors on my part weeks ago. But uh, yeah, this was the t biggest opportunity in my life. I was so excited for it when I first got the name. And then, like, days later, I had a very serious injury during camp that had me not able to, I, I could barely do anything. I was training like a, like, I don't even know, like an old grandma for like five to six weeks, like walking. And that's pretty much it, getting like 20,000 steps a day. And yeah, couldn't do nothing for five to six weeks, so I didn't have that usual cardio that I have coming into this, and it was really messing with me mentally. And uh, then, like three weeks before the fight, I got like the flu, and I was super sick. And uh, you know, people were telling me to pull out of this fight. I seriously considered pulling out of this fight so many times. There were so many times where I went to bed at night and woke up the next, and went to bed knowing tomorrow I'm gonna hit up my manager and just tell him I can't do it. Like that happened so many times, but uh, that just didn't sit well with me. And I was like, Nah, I'm not gonna pull out of this fight. This is a huge opportunity. I know I can beat this dude. And uh, yeah, I just, just, I always have the utmost faith and belief in myself, and I knew I was going to get there and find a way to win. And just last one for me. We talked about this before the fight about how your career's been a bit weird. You've had some injuries, some layoffs. Uh, this was a big opportunity here, and you came through and you got it done. How big of a year is this going to be for you in your career? And is it a bit of vindication, too? Because again, you've got a good record. It's just we haven't maybe seen you as much. This the year. This is the year. I've been in the UFC four years, going on five years now. I've fought like once a year, something like that. I know where I stack up against these dudes when I'm healthy and I'm on point. And uh, yeah, this is the year where I'm active. January is, you know, perfect for an act for setting laying out an active year I'm fighting January I want to fight again in May maybe June and then squeeze another one in like October early November right before the holiday so I can get in at least three this year just a quick one for me when you're going into a fight in this one you had a nine inch reach advantage throughout your career do you feel that you've you've fully like mastered how to utilize that kind of an advantage and conversely does it ever cr create issues for yourself when you have that that I could have used it uh, better tonight, but yeah, uh, you know, some guys have a real long reach and they don't know how to use it, but I feel like I know how to use mine fairly well, and I feel like that's what uh, gives everybody problems that is ste steps across from me. Uh, Sean, uh, w where does that rank as the strangest things that happened in your career so far? Number one. Number one, that's the craziest thing that's ever happened in my career. I mean, it's fresh, so that might be, I might be biased, but uh, yeah, off the top of my head, that's the craziest thing that's ever happened. Um, yeah, it's so cliche to say, but that was like seriously a roller coaster of emotions. Like, it was crazy. I'll never forget it. You said before that you felt a little bit off for, dur uh, before the fight, a little off during the fight. Cormier, when he was doing the commentary, actually said like there were times where you looked like you were in the zone. So what was wow. your mindset when you were, you were wow. in there? That's what I'm saying. I have, I've had another split decision on my record uh, a few years back, and this is the second split. And even in that night, I felt super off. And I, a ton of my fights, I feel off. But uh, yeah, that just as crazy as it sounds that like you know lets me know that makes that lets me know how good I am like that I'm picking up these wins at the highest level in the sport on off nights. Um, yeah, that's I mean that's just pretty much it. Yeah. And speaking of how good you are, I know you said before you're not really thinking about like who's you're fighting next or where you are in the rankings, but just to frame it for you now, that's five straight fights without a loss. That's that streak is behind only guys like Ilya Topuria who's fighting for the title, Movsar who's fighting about to fight right now. Um, does that help you kind of figure out, are you like top 20, top 20, top 15? Oh, I'd say top 20 for sure. Yeah, I know I know you got to do a lot, and it's really meaningful to be in that top 15. I don't know if they're going to, you know, throw me in there off of a split decision, and I feel like I maybe have looked lack, lackluster in there, but, I, uh, you know, I felt like if the training camp wasn't as horrific as it is, I could feel it when I was in there with them that I could have done so much more in that uh, I, I'm better than that dude. I was better than him, and like I said, he's a killer. He's been in there with the best. He was, he's was he been ranked before, I believe. I think Charles was ranked in the ranks before. So, yeah, I mean, I know – I feel like I'm, you know, one of the best. But, uh, yeah, I know I'm at least up there uh, top 20. But, yeah, I, I don't even – I don't even worry about that. I just know I keep winning these fights, and it puts me in a good spot. I know I'm in a good spot now. I just won that, and, you know, that's all I'm worried about one fight at a time.
When you say you feel off in some of these fights, why do you think that is, and, and what exactly does that mean? I mean, this fight, I know what it is. I mean, before, so the uh, uh, number one fight before, my fight against Yusuf, which was a split decision, I felt off in that one because that was like a year layoff, and I just, I guess I attribute that to ring rust and inactivity. Uh, this one, you have no idea how hard this camp was and how it was a fight to get to the fight. I was 100% certain so many times that I was going to pull out. I, uh, yeah, it was just super stressful, super hard camp, and just everything that happened during this camp, I know, uh, had me in there not at my best tonight. And Does it give you confidence that maybe you're not at your best and you're still putting together winning streaks and, you know, pulling off upsets? 100%. That's what I'm saying. I'm a dude who, like, I'm, I always look on the bright side. I stay as positive as possible. Even though when I have a performance that I'm not happy with, I still, you know, try to, you know, grasp and take whatever positive I can from that. And that's it. Like, you know, I'm in the UFC. I'm at the highest level taking on killers and winning fights on off nights. And, uh, yeah, that just it, it it adds my motivation to you know get back in the gym and you know I don't want to have these too close for comfort fights. I, I want to get back in the gym and I want to have clean kills. Sean, just a quick one right here. You mentioned the injury that had you only able to really walk. How many weeks of an actual camp did you get ahead of this fight? Solid, real deal training. I want to say like three weeks or something like that. Like real training, high train. You know, like putting in real hard work with my strength and conditioning coach and real hard work at the at my at Wolves Den, my 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 MMA gym. Yeah, about three solid weeks I'd say. Crazy. Congrats on the win. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That it? We good to go? Thank you guys.